Hello, my name is Barb Schroeder. I'm a clinical nurse specialist and I work at Methodist Hospital on Station 102, which is actually the organ transplant unit. On this unit, we see adult patients who have kidney, liver, and pancreas transplants. And so I've had the opportunity to journey with many patients and families uh, as they go through the transplant experience. And one of the things that is very common when you're coming to the hospital after you've been waiting to get the news of your transplant um, is that there is a, a period of stress, uh, anticipation, uh, uh, dealing with uncertainty, meeting new people on the team, wondering what will happen. And so when we look at stress during the transplant process, there's several things that are helpful for you to be aware of. And one is really to get a sensitivity to how you personally may experience your stress. When we look at the stress response as we go through transplant, some of the experiences are physical and you probably can name these yourself. You may get headaches when you're stressed or you may have an upset stomach. You might be fatigued or you have problems sleeping. Also when we're stressed, we have some things that occur with our thoughts and feelings. So you may notice that you're a bit more anxious or you have anxiety when you're stressed. You may notice that uh, you're impatient and you may also notice that you have uh, issues with irritability or uh, you may be angry and frustrated. When we look at the stress response, the other thing that happens is we have certain behaviors that are more common to us. Sometimes our loved ones know them better than us, but most of us can identify that when we're in a stressful uh, situation, we may overeat. Uh, we actually may become complainers or dealing with more of the negative and then the one that I see most frequently is forgetfulness and so that idea of writing down your questions of making sure you and your uh, loved one are in the room so you have multiple ears uh, to help us you assess what you need to keep track of and what you can let go. When we talk about stress there are some wonderful things that we can do that are called stress reducers. And a couple that I'd like to highlight is one really um, making lists to help your memory because you can't remember everything even on a good day and when you're in a new environment meeting new people and getting discussions with all of the team, uh, you're getting lots of information. And so the idea is keeping track of lists of what you need to know and what you need to do. Many of us have our routines that we're very used to do, but when you come in the hospital, one skill that will help you is to be flexible because things don't always happen as planned. Things don't move as smoothly. Um, somebody um, may not come and visit you when you expect them. And so that idea of flexibility for yourself helps reduce some of your stress. And then I say simplify, simplify, simplify. So. If you're coming to Mayo from a long distance, who can help you back home, whether it's take care of your garden or take care of your animals, um, take care of your mail, or if you have children at home, who is helping you with your children so that you're not trying to keep track of all of these things, but you are partnering with people that you trust and respect to help take good care of what you love back home. But also simplify here. Uh, simplify your routine and always look at ways of uh, reducing stress and that is when you're in the hospital to go out to the lounge, uh, take a little time to read a magazine, um, catch up on your emails. Um, actually there's some recliners there that you can take a little rest. Um, so look at that whole idea of how can you simplify your routine. And then sleep is real important. Uh, one of the things that some caregivers do when they come to the hospital is think they need to sleep in the room with the patient and actually this is your time to really focus on your own wellness, to go to the hotel, take a nice shower, uh, get a meal, get some rest and then come back refreshed so that you can take in uh, all that's happening the next day. Well, One of the techniques that we find to be most helpful when we're dealing with stress and anxiety related to the transplant is called diaphragmatic or relaxed breathing. It is a process where you breathe in through your nose to warm your breath, hold it for a pause, and then breathe out through your mouth. And um, what we want to do is to really engage our abdomen or our diaphragm in our breathing. So when we teach uh, our patients uh, in the hospital how to do this, it's actually to breathe in on a count of four 
hold it for two seconds, and then breathe out on a count of four. Now these are just guides for some of you. This may be too long to breathe in, too long to pause, or too long to breathe out. But it is that process of warming the breath, holding the air, and breathing out. I'm just going to demonstrate quickly for you, um, just to help you hear the process out loud. And then um, we will put some links on resources you can use uh, to help engage yourself in practicing abdominal breathing before you come to the hospital. So usually when we do the technique, we rest our hands on our abdomen, and that is so that you can generally feel that flow of air or oxygen going into your abdomen. When you breathe in, uh, your stomach should go out, and when you breathe out, your stomach should go in. I know when I teach this in class, sometimes I see people's shoulders go up, and we're not in looking at increasing uh, the capacity in your chest, but actually keeping your shoulders relaxed, resting your hands on your stomach. And so let me show you. So I'm going to breathe in on a count of four. I'm going to breathe in through my nose. Hold it for a count of two and breathe out. I'll do that again without my cues. Sometimes it's hard to gauge your fingers when you're breathing, but you get the general idea. Breathe in on a count of four. Make sure your abdomen's going out. Hold it for approximately two seconds. Breathe out on a count of four. I encourage you to do this uh, even as you're preparing to come to uh, the Transplant Center to help uh, kind of manage your anxiety and stress. Uh, I find it helpful not only just for people who are anxious, but we use it in the hospital for patients dealing with pain and sleep. So it's a wonderful technique. You can do it uh, in the car. You can do it in the chair. Uh, you can do it wherever you are, and nobody knows that you're just trying to manage your stress. So we look forward to seeing you if you come to Mayo. Uh, and again, um, there are many healthcare practitioners who can reinforce um, resources about stress management and about breathing, and we are looking forward to helping you when you arrive. Thank you very much.